question I've been asked many times before, and this is going to seem unfair to the protection team that, at that time, people like uh, Kez Wingfield and Rhys Jones, who I think had a very difficult job. I, I have been critical of them both in their protection um, with good reason. Uh, but it would be very difficult for them. They they were trained in, in a military sense and, and and were, as I understand, uh, worked in protection uh, uh, within a military concept. Working with somebody like Diana in, in a civilian contract concept is 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 so totally different. I, I think for most part, I think their protection was good. Their their failure was that, and it wasn't of their doing in a sense. They were employees of Mohammed al Fayed. Dodi Fayed, of course, was very much at the top of that Fayed pyramid. And just below that Fayed pyramid at the top was a man called Hervé Stephan, um, uh, who was the chauffeur. I think it was the chauffeur, I can't remember his name. But anyway, he, the chauffeur, had been a long term employee uh, at Fayed. And that meant a lot to the Fayed dynasty. Reese Jones and Wingfield were way down. They were plateaued out at the bottom of this pyramid. Very difficult for them to say to the others what you should do and what you shouldn't do. The one thing that would have saved Diana's life that night would have been if they'd have cooked out the chauffeur, Henri Paul, and for Reese Jones to have driven. He couldn't do that because he couldn't speak to Dodi Fayad. Dodi Fayad told him what to do. And that's a shame because had Reese Jones taken that command, had he taken that decision to boot out Henri Paul, and himself drive that car, you and I would not be having this discussion. That's where the security failed. It also failed because of their inexperience to involve the local police, to have a relationship with the assembled paparazzi. It, you cannot treat the paparazzi or the media as an enemy. That doesn't work. I found that out to my own experience over many, many years. Yes, they can be an annoying, uh, and they were at times, but actually they not one of them were out to kill the Diana of the Princess of Wales. They were there to photograph her. So you needed a dialogue, you needed a relationship. And my relationship working with the media was at times difficult. Most of the times it was enjoyable because they, if you like, I often referred to the media as my dad's army because they would always keep the princess alive, which they did. And so that, that, that was the failure of the fired security. And that's a tragedy because of that one simple incident alone the seatbelt was one issue, but the driving was another. Because I do know, having never met him, that had Reese Jones driven that car and overridden Dodie Fired's, you know, decision, we would not be having this discussion. She had run-ins with the Queen occasionally and other senior members of the royal family. We know that. But had the Queen insisted that Diana retain her Scotland Yard security, Diana would have accepted it. But you cannot force security on somebody. They have to say, yes, I'll take it. But the fact that it wasn't offered, Diana refused to take it. This was her way of saying, I want a new life. Yes, we were invasive occasionally. Having worked in this, that industry for as long as I did, you are, you become part of their family and you either learn to live with it or you don't because you are seeing all sides of their private life. And I can see why, on occasions, Diana didn't like it. But of course, we're there for a reason. We're not there because it looks good. It looks good to have a security team. There was a real threat to Diana's life. She was probably one of the most important women in the world. And there were people out there, are people to this day, that don't like members of the royal family. There are people that don't like royalty. There are people that probably didn't like Diana. And therefore, Sadly, in this climate, you need protection. She knew that. But for 99% of that time, she enjoyed the security because she knew that we gave her the freedom to be herself. I said, look, it's been great. I need to move on. And three weeks later, she invited me back to Kensington Palace. We had an amazing time uh, for about an hour and a half at Kensington Palace. All those laughter times, some of which I... I explain to you now, regale you the stories. And um, it was like that very first meeting that I had at Sandringham, with William playing the piano and Harry smashing a vase on the floor and the laughter. 
And suddenly it was over. And she said, you've always been great with advice. If there's one piece of advice you'd give me, what would it be? And I said, I don't think I've ever given advice. Well, I hadn't. I'd never advised any member of the Royal Family. I said, I don't think this is a good time to start either. She said, no, no, you must. So I struggled. I said, okay, look, I don't know what you're going to do. I, I don't know where you're going to go, um, where, if you're going to stay in this job, where you're going to still be the Princess of Wales. But you're going to need us because without us, I said, if you, and I remember saying this, I, did, I said, if you change your sex, I said, you're still going to need somebody like us because you'll never change. You will always be Diana, the Princess of Wales. So I said, I urge you, I urge you not to lose the Scotland Yard security because we have given you that freedom. We, we, we've broken rules to enable you to have the normality that you crave for. And there's no reason why that shouldn't continue, even with me gone. And we left. And then four weeks later, she abandoned the entire security. 